Hello. How are you? Uh, my name is Jean Robert Cadet. Uh, I was born in Haiti. And throughout my childhood, I would hear families would tell their friends, I'm looking for a child to help me in the house. And within days, a child would be delivered to that family. Just like I had been delivered to this family that I basically owned me. And I was four years old. And these children who were given to these families, they call them Restavek. R-E-S-T-A-V-E-K. If you're taking French, R-E-S-T means stay. A-V-E. C or K means with. So they call us Restavex. And the reason they give us that name because we stay with the family, which means we don't belong to them. They're not, we don't belong in the family. We just stay with them for the purpose of helping them. How did we help these families? We were the first to get up in the morning, the first to rise, and the last to go to sleep. We clean the house, clean the yard, go to the market, fetch water, clean the house, make the bed. And we couldn't, we were not allowed to eat with the families. We go do the shopping when the food is done. We have to be out of sight, but within the sound of everybody's voice. They call me Bobby. I didn't have a last name. My birth was never registered. I can't tell you how old I am. Because once a child is given to a family, usually it's because this child is born in extreme poverty. This child has only one parent. In my case, my mother died. I was four years old. And because I was born out of wedlock, my father said, this is not my child. And children like me, we are giving to families as gifts. And in the Haitian culture, they don't believe in adoption. When someone gives you a child, you raise that child to be a domestic slave. And that child is not living at home because you call Restavec, this is not your home. I live in those people's home at the age of four. They had a cook and, uh, or a housekeeper. The housekeeper taught me at a very early age to pick up trash. As I got older, I went out and fetched water, then washed the car, then cleaned the house, and I couldn't sleep until everybody else goes to sleep because I slept under the kitchen table on a piece of carpet. But I noticed there were hundreds of children like myself, and they called us rest of it. To me, this was normal. We were slave children. The family that owned me decided they would move to the United States in search of a better life, because Haiti is a very poor country. People don't make a lot of money. So they decided to move to the US. And I live with a family of three adults and three children. And the family's name is Cadet, C-A-D-E-T. And they gave me the name Jean Robert. At 16, I had the equivalent of a second grade education because I never went to school. These are children in the countryside, and these are children who are mostly vulnerable to be taken in as slaves. What do we do? These girls, they find themselves in the capital city, they carry the heaviest load. This picture, I took this picture a couple of years ago, and it reminds me of me when I was a child. I carried the family's children to school on my back, but I was not allowed to go to school myself. My job was to be a slave. You didn't get paid. The family moved to New York. 
And of course, when you're used to having a slave, it's hard to give it up. An example of this is the United States. It took a civil war to end slavery because people don't want to give, give up that way of life. The southern states wanted to secede, create their own country, rather than giving up slavery. So you can imagine, in the case of Haiti, you have a family that I live with, a family that has this child to provide free labor, and that child cannot speak to the family until spoken to. That child is beaten whenever they want to. That child is given the most inferior food. You don't spend anything on this child. A few months after the family came to New York, they arranged for me to come to the United States. In other words, I was trafficked illegally into this country. They took They purchase a, a blank birth certificate. They fill it in. On the birth certificate, Florence Cadet, who was my owner, she listed me on the birth certificate as her son. Where it says the na father, it says unknown. Place of birth, the general hospital. Name, Jean Robert Cadet. The day I was taken to the airport in Haiti and put on a plane to come to New York, I sat there and I had this envelope in my hand. I just opened it. I was shocked. It's like everything on that birth certificate was false. Absolutely false. It's like looking in the mirror. You're looking in the mirror, but you see somebody, somebody else's face. Florence was not my mother, she was my owner. My father was not unknown, I knew who he was. He actually gave me to this family as a gift. And when you give the, the child as a gift, the child is a slave. Place of birth, the general hospital, no, I was not born in a general hospital, I was born in the countryside, in my mother's hut. When I landed in New York, the family picked me up, took me to their home, upstate New York, and they explained to me, you're here to serve us. You're gonna get up in the morning, you're gonna set up the table for breakfast, you're gonna clean the floor, you're gonna make the beds, you're gonna vacuum, you're gonna clean the bathroom, you're gonna do the dishes, you're gonna wash the car, then you're gonna sweep the yard. After a few months, they realized that, hmm, He's not yet 18. He's about, he could be 14, maybe 16, 17. And, and according to the law of the, of the United States, a child who's not yet 18 has to be enrolled in school. So they thought about this for a long time and they decided to enroll me at a high school. And I was, because of my age, I was placed in the 10th grade. I spoke no English. Because I was in school full time, which means the housework was not being done. I was no longer needed. They said, get out of our house. Leave, we don't, no longer need you. The only place I knew where to go to sleep was the all night laundromat. So I moved into the laundromat, I slept there. In the morning I would go to the corner, I would take the bus and I would go to school. In the cafeteria, they would put the garbage can behind a door on the hallway. And I would walk by the garbage can and look, nobody's watching, and I would get my food there. A teacher decided to ask me a question one day, why are you crying? And I told him I don't have a home. And this teacher took me to the welfare office and we're talking about the 1970s. He took me to the welfare office and the welfare people gave me food stamps. 
they provide, they help, somebody help me get, find a, a roommate. And now I had a home. And I continue going to high school. Within three years, I graduated. I started to work in a gas station. I was still illegal, but I joined the U.S. military. I stayed in the military for three years. The military made me a U.S. citizen. For the first time in my life, I was a citizen of a country. Whereas in Haiti, I couldn't call myself a citizen because my birth was never registered. Never. It's like I was like a puppy. You don't give a puppy a birth certificate. You don't sing happy birthday to the puppy. I stayed in the army for three years, and I got out of the army. Under the GI Bill, I enrolled at the University of South Florida. I graduated with a degree in international affairs. Then I thought, I have to become something. I have to have a career, so I decided to become a teacher because the teachers at the high school actually rescued me. So I became a teacher. And I thought I should write about my life story. I wrote the first book. It's called Restavec. When this book was written, I was scared because I talk about my life as a child slave. And then one day, I was invited to the United Nations to talk about child slavery. Then a few years later, Oprah called. Oprah. Oh. So I was on Oprah. Then I decided that I have to do something about child slavery. So it's the situation is, is been there for 200 years. In order to, to get rid of it, you really have to change the culture, to change the mentality that perpetuates child, slave, child slavery. So these are child slaves. She's walking a child to school, at the same time carrying a bucket of water on the head. So I only have about 10 minutes to talk to you. So I'm going to show you the song that is changing so far, I have more than 500,000 children learning the song, school children. Maestro, play the song. The song has to do with the, the right, the children's rights. And it has its roots from the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. And I go to Haiti, I, have, I set conferences, I invite school principals and I give them the CD and the lyrics for free. I raise funds here, I sell copies of my books, the profit goes into this, into changing the mentality. Because 95% of those children in servitude happen to be little girls. And I can't, I shouldn't be telling you what happened to a girl who's living with a family that's not her own. By the time she, is, she reaches puberty, you know what's going to happen to her. I know. Because as a boy, I was sexually molested. So I don't have to tell you what, what happened to girls. So what I'm doing in Haiti, I think, will change the culture. And I'm trying to reach about one million children with the song. So you can play the song, please. There we go. I want you to read the words. I think they're very powerful words. J'ai créé tout le monde égal égo, mais il y a un petit monde, il y a tout pisi. Est-ce que tout le monde qu'on choisit, qui côté pour y faire? Est-ce que tout le monde décide, j'en pour y vivre? La mise est faite par un lit désespéré, il y a un confiance sur le barou, petit petit là, on guise la vie mieux, on maltraite tout le monde. Fais le travail coup bourri 
station, TV stations playing it. Uh, it's been on the air in Haiti for two years, but now uh, to do the work I have to get the song in the minds of children. So the, when I sell these books, they cost $20 each. Uh, the outside, uh, $10 goes to the publisher and $10 to go to buy more DVDs uh, to distribute to principals to get the song in the mind of kids. Thank you. Thank you. 